welcome back YouTube, it's my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're following me right now, I'm SB Answers All and I'm all about creating mental health and awareness versus sharing my life stories with OCD, asbestos syndrome and the like of many other terms of basically everyday conditions that comes in the territory of asbestos syndrome and hopefully with some tips and advice of some management skills versus just tips and advice in general to every other series that I'm sharing with you, albeit whatever it may be that's coming up or just in the past, hopefully some of this will be of value to you. But to bear in mind though, basically, just to give you a disclaimer all the time, or majority of the time of some of my videos, which I've forgotten to do in some of these ADHD and series, just to bear in mind that I'm no medical professional, I'm just doing it based on my IT teaching of the training that I did for a few years back based on youth line versus just my life experiences as well as just dealing with people in every different way and manner obviously you know it may work for you it may not it works some stuff I have done in the past has worked for me and I'm just handling it to you guys and hopefully that you guys will understand that it will hopefully be a wonders to you but in all further ado guys if you do feel that some of the tips and advice isn't for you or hasn't worked for you in a way you are entitled for a second opinion as well as just you know secondary professional medical you know ex treatment or whatever it may be so just to know the warning signs and symptoms before you know seeking help for yourself or for your loved one of whatever series it may be it's the best to you know not to leave it to the last minute so the, the the sooner the better we actually know these warning signs, the sooner the better to manage these symptoms and keep them out of while away. So in all further ado guys, basically just to give you the lowdown, even though you know I'm doing the HD, ADHD and series at the moment and the last one I just did was all about how to deal with, you know, children temper tantrums and this is going to be the second part which is all about how to deal with the adult temper tantrums. Adults obviously, you know, will experience temper tantrums most of the time too when it leaves lead to maybe the point when they were smaller basically and like as toddlers but you got to remember as toddlers we are often uncomfortable of controlling or appropriately expressing our own emotions to the point now that we've got to remember for us adults we can have these outbursts that hang to have those same qualities as, as a toddler's one. Fortunately, most adults are rational human beings who are capable of reasoning and controlling their anger. Communicating and effectively saying calm yourself can help deal with an adult temper tantrum, basically, if we are dealing it with the right way. So, without further ado, guys, basically, the three methods I want to address to you all on this is a gentle reminder for you all, basically, so that you can follow it step by step or what have you. Uh, as follows. Method one is acknowledging your emotions. Method two, guiding positive communication. And three, diffusing the situation. As I said before, many people may, you know, do this in a different way, but hopefully some of those will be effective and beneficial to you all in a way. It's just as like I said, a gentle reminder and help you to become aware of your surroundings. So method one, acknowledging your emotions. Okay, number one on this is remain calm, always do so. If you become angry or defensive yourself, you may likely to exacerbate the tantrum that the person is, other person is having. But then again, you gotta remember that if you're calm and rational, it's most likely that you'll be able to diffuse the temper of the other person as well as you know the environment you guys are in. Number two, realize that you can't control someone else. One of the most difficult parts of dealing with the emotions of another person, particularly someone as close to you, be it a friend, family member, or whoever, maybe a social work, work person that you work in, in the office, or what have you, it is about accepting that you can't change the thoughts or actions of the other person, or their behavior towards you, or a particular situation that's maybe causing them to have this, you know, outburst. You can offer help and support, however, in a in a right way of it but you can't always control another person just remember that number three asking what is ask what is a temper person and also prone to temper changes are unlikely to be effective communicators so it's best to start young you know to know what's going on you may have to ask the person what is causing them to be upset be calm and give them time to fully explain yourself a tip here to remember is to be patient and persistent you could say to them I know you said that there is nothing wrong but I can tell by the way you're acting right now that you're really upset about something please talk to me about why you are upset so that I can help you if I am able to help you if you aren't ready to talk about it now just please remember that I'm here for you when you are ready to talk 
Number four, validate the person's emotions. It is important to express the person who is having that tantrum that it's okay for them to feel the way they are with these emotions, even if you don't always agree with the way they're expressing it in their tantrum power of it. You can tell them that what they're feeling is okay. Accepting feelings such as anger is a normal part of life and can offer to help them with the emotions in a healthier way. Classic example to illustrate to you all you might want to say to that person that's having those temper tantrums is it seems to me that you are feeling angry or hurt because of a situation that you're facing it's perfectly normal to feel that way can we talk about how you feel and how we can make you feel better method number two guiding positive communication number one apologize for any wrongdoings on your part if you feel that you were part of the reason for them to have that temper tantrum on them just to get mad at you or upset or what have you apologize to them for what you did or say if you do not feel that you did something wrong per se, you can still apologise for making him feel that or her feel that way because obviously at the end of the day, then they'll actually be really happy that you've done this. For example, if you did something wrong, you might say, I'm very sorry that I accidentally downloaded a virus that destroyed your computer. I understand why that would make you upset and I will do whatever I can to help you repair or replace this computer. Or another classic example is if you did not do anything wrong but still upset someone you could say I'm really sorry that I accepted you by picking out the wrong paint colour for the living room myself. I didn't know that it was so important to you. I'll try to be more considerate of your feelings in the future and involve you in every decision we make. Number two, use the words we and us. Obviously it's all about communicating and there's no I in a team. It's we. Obviously, using the words that I and you can create a divide between you and the other person. This divide, however, will, may cause that tantrum thrown party to become more defensive or even angrier. However, using the words we or else implies that you are a part of a team, as mentioned. You might reduce some of the other person's angry feelings and frustrations. A classic example you can do here is the following may cause someone to become more defensive. You should not be so upset about your computer crashing. My computer crashed last night and I didn't get upset at all. I just went and got a new one. You should do the same thing. A better example of team communication would be, what can we do together to solve this problem? Can we take it to a repair shop? Or is it time for us to invest in a new or better computer for you? We, we can get it through this together and make the best of the situation. 3. Maintain a neutral or positive tone. It is important to avoid sounding condescending or frustrated while speaking with someone who is having a temper tantrum. If they think that you are talking them down, he may, they may become angrier or stop listening to you. It's also important to avoid sounding sarcastic. Keeping your voice at a constant volume and tone will help you sound natural. 4. Stick to the facts when possible. Abandon any emotionally charged language or anything that might be interpreted as an accusation and stick to the facts of the events that has upset the person in the first place. Emphasizing the facts may not cause the temper tantrum to subside but it is less likely to make the situation any worse. For example, saying I'm sorry that the computer crashed but you may have clicked on the links of some cat videos too. You can hardly say that it was entirely all my fault. It may cause the person to become more angrier. Instead of these this maybe by the following factual statements may be less inflammatory. I clicked on the link and the computer crashed. We cannot change those facts. Now we have to decide what to do about the session. We could either try to have a company repair the computer or we could have to purchase a new computer. Again, the team strategy there about the you know communicating here as I'm sharing. Number five, encourage rational thinking. It might be difficult to convince someone who's having a temper tantrum to use rational thoughts, but if you can get the, them to use rational thinking mind to overcome their emotional response, they're likely to snap out of the tantrum quick smart. This is an approach for which you may need to be particularly careful about not sounding too condescending or again invalidating. This may not work for everyone however, by helping someone understand that they're being angry will not help solve the problem, might kickstart their reasoning mind, you might say to them, I understand you may be angry right now. And you have every right to be. Let's talk through some possible solutions and then figure out how we can make this better as well as you. Number two, make sure that you are validating their feelings again to avoid coming off as condescending or uncaring to that person. You can acknowledge their feelings and encourage problem solving. Last but not least, method three, diffusing the situation. Tip number one, it's always important to give the person space and time to think and also maybe have a call off period similar to when a child has their temper tantrums obviously. Now, you may not be able to also, which is just common knowledge, basically know that it's you won't be able to have a reasonable conversation in that time frame when they're in that mood with you. 
so the sometimes the best option is obviously just to give them that time and space to cool off and actually calm down and then they'll probably be able to be capable of keeping a conversation with you it can be difficult if it's someone you live with or someone that you love but you can go outside running around or two or do a chore or activity in another room Number two, prompt the change of environment. New people will respond well to a change of the environment if they're feeling angry. Moving from an indoor space to an outdoor space can be particularly effective as being outdoors can live like one mood. You can be either direct and say you're upset, let's go fork and talk about what's bothering, or indirect you're saying I need to go down the street to get something. Do you want to join me for some fresh air for a few minutes so that you can calm down? Number three, again, encourage deep breaths or meditation. A good way to deal with anger or other overwhelming emotions is to sit quietly and focus on taking very deep breaths. Combining the deep breathing with some meditation exercise, such as visualizing a happy place or picturing negative emotions exiting the body, can make the breathing even more effective. If the person is willing, you can guide them through the meditation exercise yourself. Instruct them to do the following. You can do it too by sitting with them as you guide them through it. So the following is sit comfortably with both feet on the floor and your hands resting comfortably in your lap. Close your eyes. Take a breath in. Deep breath. Allowing that belly to expand the fullness of your breath. Picture a white light entering every corner of your mind and body as you breathe in. Breathe out slowly and deliberate, allowing yourself to fully exhale. As you exhale, picture negative activity leaving your body as dark money colours, leaving only the light behind. Repeat this for 10 to 20 breaths, one until the person feels relaxed and comfortable. Tip number four, suggest a solution to the problem. If the person who is having a tent aversion is too overcome with your emotions to think rationally or is unwilling to brainstorm a reasonable solution with you, try suggesting for solutions to the problem. So, as I said before, to heat a bit of the one. Your call ahead is likely to prevail and you might be able to get through to them. Don't be surprised if the person initially rejects your solutions. They may need some time to calm down and process what you just suggested. He, they may as well very well return to you later and say that they'll look into one of those suggestions to solve that problem. Number five, ask the person what needs to be in order to keep them calmer or feel them calmer. If you are really at a loss to how to handle that person, or how to help that person having a symptom tantrum, you should try asking them what you can do to help. They may be able to tell you that they just need time, a hug, or just a walk outside. People who are prone to anger may be aware of what helps them best to cool them down while angry. Number six is revisit, revisit any sense of topics at a later time. If you're having a conversation that caused the person to get into a temper tantrum, you should probably drop the topic for now. It is not completely time sensitive here. Give the person time to just get over their initial anger and return it to a later date while they'll come and collect it. The warnings here is basically on this is number one, do not respond in an aggressive or reactionary way. This will likely to escalate the situation and the problem at the first place. Number two, if you feel that someone's anger towards you may become violent, remove yourself to a safe place or ask for help for someone who can protect you. Number three, if you're ever in a crisis, try to call a healthcare professional or suicide hotline before involving the police. There may be some incidents where police intervention of some cases of people in mental crisis have resulted in traumatization or death. When possible, know the warning signs if possible as well when it comes down to them getting angry because you never know, it could lead to undiagnosis of certain other problems as I mentioned in the first part for the kids. When possible, involve someone you're sure about has that expertise and training to do deal with specifically mental health or psychiatric crises if they may be. So that basically ends the one of how to deal with adults tantrums basically of the second part feel free to comment below feel free to follow me on twitter facebook ask me as well give me the like for thumbs up for support and engagement feel free to also just basically share these videos around to family and friends so that we can learn to hear from each other and hopefully that and all for the do guys basically do what you love love what you do thanks for your support and i'll see you all again soon